One of the great things about opera or about musical theater or about film scores or anything else that integrates music and drama is that we don't only get the meaning from the words that are being spoken or sung, we also get meaning from the music that we hear. That can be the keys, the modes, the scales, uh, the timbre of the instruments, and finally the melodies or the themes that we hear. And very often in opera, thanks in large part to Richard Wagner, whom Gershwin clearly had studied, we get a particular theme that is known as a motive or, um, or a leitmotif that becomes associated with a particular idea or a character. When you hear, you know that somebody is talking about Porgy because that is his motive. Uh, when you hear, that is associated with the character of sporting life. If you hear that, you know that there's something to do with crown going on. Even if he's not on stage, there's some, uh, you know that he is somehow relevant to the action. As is often the case, the musical qualities of the motive have something to do with the character. For example, this is Porgy. Um, the first time he comes in, we hear this motive. It's a very noble sounding motive. You can tell that he's our protagonist. There's also some wonderful blues inflection. So next we have the themes of our two main antagonists. There is Crown, who is the partner of Bess when we first meet them. He is an abusive person. He commits a murder, and when this comes to his attention, really doesn't seem to be particularly bothered by it. Uh, he's a very sinister figure, and he has this motive. Uh, with that syncopation, kind of a, you can tell he's not a very nice guy from that. And then finally there is uh, the Mephistophelian character of sporting life, the drug dealer. And uh, his uh, theme is one of the most famous in the opera because he sings um, the wonderful song, It Ain't Necessarily So, uh, to his motive. It ain't necessarily so. So you have this. Uh, we have this movement by half steps, um, or to use the uh, technical term, chromaticism, which is kind of a snaky thing. It's, uh, you can tell he's up to no good. Um, also, it's related to the theme for the happy dust, which is what they call cocaine, uh, and he is the peddler of the cocaine, also very chromatic. So we get this uh, snakiness of sporting life that shows what a sneaky guy he is, the fact that uh, he really plots the downfall of Porgy and Bess. His end game is to get Bess to come to New York with him so that uh, she can be his prostitute. Really bad guy and uh, communicates all of that nefarious character. In Sporting Life's final theme, where he orchestrates the downfall of Bess and Porgy, it starts to take on an extremely sinister connotation. All right, I'll leave it here. Maybe you'll change your mind. There are also some wonderful interrelations of motives within the opera. For example, uh, Porgy describes himself in the first scene as a crap-shooting idiot, and so it's not a surprise that the craps motive is in fact uh, similar to his. Here's the craps game. So, similar contour. And then when the fight breaks out between Robbins, one of the craps players, and Crown, uh, we get the craps theme and the crown theme together. And because the craps theme is related to the porgy theme, that foreshadows this fight to come, the real fight in the opera between crown and porgy in act three.
Likewise, you have the dangerous character of sporting life with his. And then you have the hurricane, another self-evidently dangerous thing with the motive. That has a similar contour to sporting life just without the chromaticism, so. One of the motives that we get most developed or changed throughout the course of the opera, that is we uh, hear it in different contexts and, and um, uh, sort of twisted into different forms, is the porgy motive. Uh, so once again, is our porgy. At one point when he, um, actually in the last scene, he's coming back from jail and he thinks everything is all right, but in fact, um, his world is about to be turned on its head by a very unpleasant discovery, and so his theme gets turned upside down. And we also hear Porgy being um, torn apart in certain uh, situations. And this actually brings us to another very important, it's not quite a motive in the opera, but a chord progression that underlies much of the uh, negative action, anxiety, um, the intrusion of the hostile white characters, uh, grief of death. And that progression sounds like this. So when Porgy has come back from jail and he finally realizes that Bess is no longer there, uh, we hear his theme uh, sort of oddly distorted with this chord progression. There are at least two ways in which the leitmotifs in Porgy and Bess emphasize the social issues um, that are at the core of the opera. Uh, first, there's a particularly dramatic scene in the first act in which the white supremacist detective uh, is uh, interrogating Porgy. Um, Porgy is very afraid to, um, to answer because he's a very threatening person, uh, and he finally um, commands Porgy to look at him using very frightening racist language and Porgy, before he um, actually answers, the orchestra plays his leitmotif ending on a very bluesy chord. Sounds like this. The significance of hearing Porgy's theme there is that it is a way for him to assert his personhood and his identity in the midst of this very dehumanizing situation. Another important issue arises also staying with Porgy's theme, and that is Porgy's theme in relation to Bess. We first meet Bess in an abusive relationship with Crown, the murderer and the drug addict, whom we later see um, sexually assaulting her on Kittiwa Island. And um, Bess is someone who is shamed by the rest of the community. Porgy is the only one who will give her a chance because she falls outside of, um, sort of the strict moral code of Catfish Row. And uh, she is a person who has not really been able to develop a sense of self because of this, um, the shaming of society, because she has been with an abusive partner who has not uh, really allowed her to be herself. And she is trying to find her own way, and she does so with Porgy's help. And she does not actually get her own leitmotif, but 
uh, when she's looking for strength uh, when, on, in the scene in Kidiwa Island when Crown is confronting her, she relies upon Porgy's motive. In fact, there is an echo of Porgy with the detective when she asserts herself with Crown. Uh, we get the Porgy motive in the orchestra. And then she proceeds to stand up for herself. But Crown is very aggressive and she finally has this pleading, um, really haunting aria, What You Want With Bess, in which um, she tries to convince Crown to that she's not so good herself, he should go to other women, she tries to use flattery, and she does so um, with this theme. Very similar to the Porgy motive. And then the orchestra also answers. 